Okay, so welcome back. And this small segment is going to teach you how to measure the charge on an object. So I have a metal ball. It doesn't look metal. Looks, you know, looks like it's uh, maybe made of carbon or something like that. But this is a metal spherical ball and it is attached to an insulating stick. And this stick right here has very, very, very low conductivity, super low conductivity. So if you put charge on that ball, it's gonna stay on the ball, all right? And in the video that you're gonna be using for the experiment, you'll see the person taking a ball on a stick like this, and they'll be approaching another ball, which is, which has the exact same charge. And so this is gonna come in here like this, and you can see right now there's no charge on these balls. But as this comes in, and this has a positive charge, and this has a positive charge, this ball will go over to the left because of repulsion. And then by measuring how far it gets deflected to the left as this charge comes in, uh, you'll be able to measure the, f the relationship between force and position of these two charges. Now we know that gravity is acting on this ball and there's tension in the string. But if there's another force, electric force coming from uh, my right, that it's gonna draw it over like this, that third force is gonna create a static equilibrium situation. And from that, we can determine what that force must be because we know like the length of the string, we know how much the ball weighs, and from that information, we can determine what that force is. So that that's how we're gonna actually capture the data. But we also need to measure the charge that's on these balls. So I'm gonna demonstrate how we do that. So what I have over here is what's called a Faraday cage. And a Faraday cage allows me to polarize these two cylinders. So when I take a charge and I bring it in here, this thing will become polarized. In fact, when I bring the when I enter the charge into the Faraday cage like this. By the way, it's all metal down to the very bottom, so it's like a bucket. And when I touch the bottom, it will pick up the, the charge of this ball. And then the outside will become negatively charged in relation to that positive charge. And it'll show up as a voltage on this very, very sensitive voltmeter over here. Okay, so right now, it's basically set on zero. And there's no charge on this right now. As you can see, when I put it in there, nothing happens. So the very first measurement you need to know is what is the capacitance of the Faraday cage along with the electrometer. So you take this meter right here, it's called an LCR meter. It's dedicated for measuring capacitance, resistance, and inductance. You're gonna be seeing a lot of it in this course. Okay, and we're gonna set it for capacitance. And right now, you just go to the lower right-hand corner and you can see it says NF, very hard to see uh, because it's so small. NF means nanofarads. Nanofarads. 10 to the negative 9 farads. So I hook this up negative on the outside and positive on the inside and it will tell me what the capacitance of the Faraday cage and electrometer is. And I'm getting a number. Can you read the number? You can talk. 150. Oh, perfect. So the Faraday cage can hold 0.153 nanocoulombs of charge per one volt of voltage. So it tells you how much charge there is for a certain amount of voltage. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna introduce this charge ball into the Faraday cage. We're gonna, we're gonna get it up to 6,000 volts. So right over here, I have a 6,000 volt power supply. I'm gonna flip it on. It's peak value. Now this is positive right here. It'll be positive 6,000 and about 6,150 volts. All I have to do is touch this thing, and this ball is now charged to 6,150 volts. So there's so much charge on here corresponding to that voltage. Now I'm gonna take this thing, 
Now this thing has a certain amount of charge on there. I used the 6,000 volts just to put a lot of charge on there. Now the charge can't go anywhere because the string on here is a really, really good insulator. So I'm going to introduce that charge into here and see how much voltage it induces into the Faraday cage. And you can see it's reading 88 volts. Okay, and I bring it out, and you can see I touch the bottom, so I dump that charge right on the Faraday cage, because the Faraday cage is like a ground. It's got a lot more charge than this little ball has. So all the charge got dumped right into that Faraday cage and polarized it. And it polarized it, depending on how much charge I introduce, to a certain voltage level. And this is 89, 88, 89 volts. So then what I do is I take the capacitance and I multiply by the voltage and I get the charge. And so that's how we measure charge. So it's a lot, it's like a whole experiment in itself doing that. So if you were actually doing the experiment, you do it like five times. So you could take this thing and uh, you could discharge it. Okay, you can touch it right here. By the way, this doesn't really have any charge on it right now. But you can... Uh, I had a ground wire here somewhere, but that's okay. We can, we can skip that. But anyway, that's how you, you measure the charge, and you could just do it repeatedly over and over again, just discharge. In fact, my body's a reservoir, so you see I can go like that, and now you see it's reading zero again. Okay, and then I can put that 6,000 volts on there again, so I touch this thing get 6,000 volts on there, and then see what it does to the Faraday cage. This time I got 90 volts. So you can see a little bit of random error, 90, 91 volts. So if you take like five measurements and average them, you get a better value. All right, so that is it. So the next time you see me, we'll uh, for the lab itself and, it, and you'll be told beforehand that you need to be looking at these videos but you'll be looking at them before you come to lab and then you'll be also be looking at them afterwards to make sure that when you write up your lab report you understand exactly how to write the procedures for the various components of the lab because you need to describe what I just did here and since it's all on video you can go back and forth until you understand what happen. And in, in the lab sheet has a little equation to determine the charge from the capacitance and voltage. Okay, so that's lab two's on electric fields and voltage.